Assalamu alaikum. This is a presentation for medical students by Dr. Muntaz Ahmad Umar and today's topic is Acute Separative Otitis Media. Acute Separative Otitis Media is an acute inflammation of the mucous membrane lining of the middle ear cleft by the pyogenic organisms. It is distinguished from secretory otitis media or otitis media with diffusion by the presence of purulent fluid in the middle ear. Now we will look at what is the middle ear cleft. So middle ear cleft it consists of eustachian tube, the tympanic cavity which is the middle ear cavity, attic, aditus, aditus is a small communicating pipe between the attic and antrum, then the mastoid antrum and the mastoid air cells. So this whole is known as middle ear cleft. So Otitis media is not only the infection or problem of the middle ear but the whole middle ear cleft. Epidemiology It is one of the most common disease of childhood. Its highest incidence occurs between 6 and 24 months of age. However, it is less common after 7 years of age. Up till 3 years, 7 to 80 percent of all children have at least one attack of acute otitis media. Otitis media is the second most common clinical problem in childhood after respiratory infection. Risk factors The known risk factors for acute otitis media are, as already mentioned, most common in infants and lower, uh, small children. Then, lower socioeconomic group is more commonly affected than those children who are outside in child care centers, as there is more exposure with wide range of flora. Then the parental smoking will affect the children with acute otitis media. Those children who are bottle fed and has not been immunized are also at risk of developing acute otitis media. So roots of infection. Eustachian tube is the most common route. The infection travels via its lumen or along the subepithelial peritubal lymphatics. Eustachian tube in infants and small children is shorter, wider and more horizontal and thus may account for higher incidence of infections in this age group. Breast or bottle feeding in a young infant in horizontal position may force the fluids through the tube into the middle ear. So the infant should be propped up with a head little higher. Then other route is the external ear if the traumatic rupture becomes contaminated or there is pre-existing perforation of the tympanic membrane then bathing, swimming and diving which all causes entry of water may lead to infection of the middle ear. Blood bond, the third route, however it is rare but if there is generalized septicemia then it can affect via this route. So, if we, this is just a comparison of uh, the eustachian tube of a child with an adult, you see this is more horizontally placed while it is slanting in the adult. So, infection can straightway go to the ear more commonly as compared to adults. Predisposing factors Any condition that interfere with the normal use functioning of the eustachian tube is the predisposing factor including recurrent attacks of common cold, upper respiratory tract infection, infections of the tonsils and adenoids, chronic rhinitis, allergic rhinitis, sinusitis, eustachian tube dysfunctions, tumors of the nasopharynx or packing of the nasopharynx or anterior nasal cavity for epistaxis, cleft palate, craniofacial abnormalities or cigarette smoke and air pollution. These are all the predisposing factors. Bacteriology Usually, it starts as a viral infection, which are the primary invaders like respiratory syncytial virus, influenza, parainfluenza virus, adeno and rhinovirus. So, when secondary bacterial invasion occurs, the most common is the streptococcus pneumoniae, followed by hemophilus influenza, Moraxella catralis, Staphylococcus, and other gram negative enteric bacteria. Pathology this disease is further classified into different stages which are the stage of tubal occlusion, pre-separation, separation, resolution and complication. So we will see each stage individually. How 
clinical features usually occur due to the inflammation that begins in the eustachian tube then it spreads producing a cyclic inflammatory changes which makes it convenient convenient to describe the clinical features in stages each stage has its specific uh, symptoms so the stage of tubal occlusion or the catarrhal stage edema edema and hyperemia of the nasopharyngeal end of the eustachian tube blocks the tube leading to absorption of air and negative intratympanic pressure leading to retraction of the eardrum so the symptoms they are mild in nature starting with mild ear ache and mild hearing loss when you examine the eardrum with otoscopy so the normal light reflex of the eardrum it is lost so there will be retraction of the tympanic membrane light reflex it disappears and if you do the turing fork test they will show conductive hearing loss so let us just review what the retraction of tympanic membrane mean so this is the normal tympanic membrane but if you see this is the starting phase of the retraction it is dull and lusterless the cone of light it is disappears or it become distorted the handle of malleus it becomes more horizontally placed the lateral process it becomes more prominent whereas the anterior and the posterior malleolar folds they become sickle shaped so these are the different causes for the retraction of the eardrum now the for the pathology of the first stage it starts as a viral infection leading to inflammation in the eustachian tube and the middle ear so the nasopharyngeal end of the eustachian tube this is the nasopharyngeal end it gets inflamed and blocked leading to blockage of the eustachian tube so the normal drainage of the secretions it gets disturbed and the secretions they start collected in the middle ear stage of pre separation if the tubal occlusion is prolonged the pyogenic organisms they invade the tympanic cavity causing hyperemia of its lining inflammatory exudate appears in the middle ear and tympanic membrane becomes congested the symptoms there will be in marked ear ache and it may disturb the sleep and it is of throbbing nature deafness and tinnitus are also present the child runs with high degree fever and is restless on otoscopic examination there is congestion of the past tense to start with leash of blood vessels they appear along the handle of the malleus and at the periphery giving rise uh, giving uh, rise to the cartwheel appearance later on whole of the eardrum it becomes congested tuning fork test again will show conductive type of hearing loss so the inflammation it has taken over the whole of the middle ear the station tube uh, this is completely blocked and fluid it start collecting in the middle ear and the eardrum it is red and visible from the outside stage of separation there will be it is marked by the formation of pus in the middle ear and to some extent in the mastoid ear cells tympanic membrane starts to bulge to the point of rupture the symptoms there the ear ache becomes excruciating deafness it increases child runs with very high grade fever uh, runs with high grade fever of 102 to 103 degree fahrenheit and it may be associated with rigors chills vomiting and even convulsions signs the tympanic membrane become red and bulging there is loss of landmark handle of malleus may be engulfed by the swollen protruding tympanic membrane and may not be discernible and it become invisible yellow spot is visible on the tympanic membrane where rupture is imminent 
and there will be tenderness over the mastoid antrum so now the pressure causes intense pains when the fluid or the pus it gets collected in the middle ear cavity it causes pressure on the eardrum which leads to bulging and this bulging or this pressure is causing the excruciating pain and fever results from the infection stage of resolution the tympanic membrane it ruptures with release of pus and subsidence of symptoms inflammatory process it begins to resolve if proper treatment is started early on or if the infection was mild resolution may start even without rupture of the eardrum so this is a small pinhole rupture either it will rupture like this or i will show you in the next picture how the perforation can be symptoms with excavation of the pus ear ache is relieved fever comes down and child starts to feel better the signs it will show the on the otoscopy the external artery canal may contain blood stained discharge which becomes later on mucopurulent usually a small perforation is seen in the antero inferior quadrant of the pars tensa so if we see that this is the handle of malleus which is not clearly visible in this picture but we divide the eardrum along this handle of malleus the vertical line then the at the umbo a horizontal line so this will be antero superior quadrant this is antero inferior quadrant this is postero superior quadrant and this is postero inferior quadrant so most commonly it can it occurs in the antero inferior quadrant but it can occur at any part any quadrant many times the perforation when it heals the hyperemia it subsides and the line marks which are uh absent or has lost will reappear stage of complication if the virulence of the organism is high or resistance of the patient is poor resolution may not take place and disease spreads beyond the confines of the middle ear it in may and then lead to acute mastoiditis subperiosteal abscess facial paralysis lymphitis pterocytosis extradural abscess meningitis brain abscess or lateral sinus thrombophilibitis so this is the picture representation of different stages of the uh, acute separative otitis media so this is the stage of tubal occlusion this is stage of pre separation this is the stage of separation this is stage of resolution uh here it is very important that you should keep in mind there is two terms one is acute otitis media and one is acute separative otitis media clinically we take acute separative otitis media once the pus it has start to coming out and ooze out before this stage where the eardrum is intact we call it as acute otitis media if you look at this uh, picture the pus is still there the stage of separation has come but clinically we call it acute otitis media because the eardrum is still intact so anatomically if you see these are different there the rupture it may become as acute separative otitis media it can give rise to chronic separative otitis media the perforation become permanent if it leads to labyrinth it will cause labyrinthitis the facial nerve causes facial paralysis it goes to the mastoid leading to subperiosteal abscess and uh, go downs into the neck causing neck abscesses or if it goes into the brain causing intracranial complications so investigations depending on the stage of the disease uh, we will perform certain investigations including the complete blood count which will show neutrophilia if the pus has started oozing out then you will do the ear swab for culture and sensitivity examination under microscope if uh, depending upon the stage uh, may have to may be needed then audiometry uh, to check for the hearing loss tympanometry if the eardrum is still intact it will show a flat cuff then radiology depending again at which stage the patient is presenting and what are the uh condition of the what is the condition of the patient x-ray mastoid and ct's temporal bone 
treatment treatment is mainly medical all the cases with fever and earache should be started with medication so first is and the most important is the antibacterial therapy and it should be continued for at least a 10 days amoxicillin 40 mg per kg per day in three divided doses and in beta lactamase producing organisms augmentin or coamoxiclib the augmentin it should be prescribed then as we have seen the predisposing factors so we will start with the decongestant nasal drops it relieves the edema of the eustachian tube and should be given for 5 days oral decongestant can also be prescribed including sudafedrine analgesic and antipyretic either paracetamol or ibuprofen if the pus it has started coming out then ear toilet cleaning of the pus with suction and cleaning or dry mopping and in certain cases when the pain is too much dry local heat or uh, handkerchief with uh, hot iron you can put uh, on the ear early discontinuation of the antibiotic therapy will lead to or give rise to otitis media with effusion and residual hearing loss surgical treatment surgical treatment is mainly meringotomy but it is only restricted for those patients which does not get better after 48 hours of treatment or in which the conditions worsen so there are certain indications for meringotomy in acute suppurative otitis media which is severe earache with bulging eardrum then incomplete resolution with opaque drum and persistent conductive deafness small perforation with inadequate drainage meaning the perforation is already there but the pus is too much or too thick that it is not able to drain out properly through that perforation so in those cases we will enlarge that perforation so the pus will evacuate and the conditions get better or complications of acute otitis media like facial paralysis amphitis or meningitis with bulging tm there is no point in carrying out meringotomy once there is already a big perforation because in meringotomy we ourselves making a hole and in cases with recurrent acute otitis media we do meringotomy in certain cases after meringotomy ventilation tubes can also be placed this one is known as grommet insertion grommet insertion then the procedure will be meringotomy with grommet insertion these grommets they retain or remain there in the ear drum for 3 to 6 months and then extrude themselves or ex extrude out itself thank you